This is an activity I came up with to uh, start a review with my eighth graders on one and two step equations. I wanted to back up and help them remember what the equation meant, not just how to solve for x, but uh, the number sense of what equations mean, how one side is equal to the other, and how we find what's missing. So I created bags using these colored squares as quantities. I color coded the things in each bag to um, help keep it sorted. So in this case, I put on the table, here is a bag, it contains a quantity. It's just a, a paper bag with an X on it. And I don't know what X is, but I know that X is equal to three. Um, so I have to create an equation for what that might look like. And this is very simple. And in fact, it's so simple, it could be a little confusing for them. So this one we did together. And um, we decided, well, if X equals three, that is my equation, it's also my answer, and what should be in this bag is three chips, um, the quantity of three, because if x equals three, then that's what x should be. All right, so, okay, we move on to the second problem, in this case, where I have another x. x, again, is an unknown quantity in a bag. But, I'm keeping the pieces of this uh, together. I had to separate with a, a ziplock. But, in this problem, x plus this quantity is equal to 13. And, of course, what makes it an equation is that there's an equals. Um, and so, uh, what I really want them to do is, is work through this just using common sense, using logic. What plus that would equal 13? So, in this case, I send them back to their desk to write an equation, and what they should get is x plus 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 equals 13. So, that's their equation, but I haven't asked them to solve it yet. I just wanted them to write it out. Um, we thought about using 13 squares on the other end, so we could actually see and move those around, too, but it got a little, just, it was too many pieces, so... Um, but still not a bad idea, I'm trying to make that work. Once they have their equation, they can solve for what's left, and this is a very simple one, you can do it in your head, and I, I kind of want them to be able to do that. But what they should be able to say to themselves is if this is an addition problem, then working backward, 13 minus this number should give me that number. And they figure out that x is equal to six, and then we dump out that quantity. And of course, it is equal to six. Still sticking with one-step equations. Uh, we move to the next one, which is going to involve subtraction. And in this case, I have, again, the term x. And x plus this equals three. So those are the pieces of my equation. They have to go back to their table and write this equation out. Um, and my students quickly figured out what, what this represented, that it's negative, there's something missing. If they asked me, I said, well, these are, these are missing squares. Um, and that combined with the negative symbol, they, most of them figured out pretty quickly that it was a negative five. So they write their equation, x plus negative five equals three. Again, they could just think their way through this and figure it out. Um, but what I really want them to see after they've solved and we open the bag is the idea of making negative pairs. So we had to have eight if I were going to subtract five and have three left over. But then I make a point of ha having them all walk through it with me. If that's a negative one, then I add a positive one and that's a zero pair, they disappear. And these five quantities disappear as they are combined with a negative, and then I'm left with my three, which was my answer. All right, problem number four. In this case, I line up my three bags. One of them has my papers in it. So I have three bags, all with an X on them, and those bags together equal 18. So now we're getting into coefficients. Uh, without any clues, the students have to go back and create an equation for uh, this problem. And many of them 
did this, which was fine, um, and that gives us a chance to talk about combining like terms. Uh, but in this case, um, I had a lot of students who just went straight to this. And then we discussed whether each bag had to contain the same number of chips, and there was a lot of debate about that. Some said no, one, one X could be 12, or one could be three, and one could be six. But then when I said, okay, so what is X equal to? They realized that within any given equation, all of the X's have to be the same value. Um, so that got us to that point. And then of course we take our 18, and you could literally have 18 chips over on the side if you have that much space <laughs> um, and energy, and uh, they divide that out into the different bags uh, and realize that each bag must contain six. And then we dump those out on the table and we see that each bag does contain six chips. So three times my X, which is six equals eight. Okay, problem number five. I again have two bags. Those both have an X and I stuck with X. I didn't try to throw in other variables because I'm, I'm really trying to get more of the, the idea that a variable is a mystery number and I didn't want to keep changing that on them. Um, I wanted to stick just to the the idea that it varies even if it's X every time. So, and in this case I have, oh, I've lost my equal sign. Okay, fell out of the bag. All right, again, I had to represent negative numbers by leaving spaces where chips should go and we end with a negative two. So they go back, they write their equation. In this case, we have this down that two X minus eight, and they have to count that, or two X plus a negative eight equals negative two. And in this case, we would discuss um, what number needs to be bigger on the left side of the equation to end up with a negative on the right. And so, of course, the negative eight has to be the biggest number. So X is gonna be less than that, at the very least, um, or at the very most. So then the, they can solve for X, and many of them do, at least some kids in the group can. But what I really want them to see is that if I'm going to end with a negative two, I don't have to worry about those two negatives. They, they are my, my end point. Um, so if I had eight negatives to start with, and I'm still going to have two when I get down here. So uh, we're sort of getting into a little bit of model drawing in this case. So if I have a negative eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, I'm going to have these two when I get to the end, but I need to get rid of one, two, three, four, five, six. And this is really where we start to where the number sense starts to come in, uh, what these various values mean. So in that case, if I'm going to have my two left over, the negative two, that means I can't have this negative six. And if I'm going to create zero pairs to get rid of that negative six, then I have to have six somewhere in these two bags. My two X's have to equal six, which of course means they're each three. Again, they could solve this by moving parts of this uh, two-step equation from side to side, but I, it's the, the understanding of the real quantities involved that I want them to get. And so I don't want them just to move things without realizing why did I add an eight to both sides and why did I divide by two? And then of course we're making our negative, our zero pairs here, three from one bag, three from the next bag. And that takes care of my six. It leaves me with negative two if that were all still connected, and negative two is what I need in the end. Problem number six, I have one bag, one X, and that X divided by five, and I could use chips or numbers, so at this point I'm starting just to use numbers. Um, just the, the symbols that represent the quantities then um, 
and I reviewed with my eighth graders what it means to divide by five. That means I'm making five groups. I'm making five piles of chips. Um, and so what has to be in this bag? Uh, and then we talk about the fact that we could actually reverse those two and it still works. Five piles of three or three piles of five. So what has to be in there? It has to be 15. And that's when we really do lay these out into five groups. Again, it seems like a very elementary concept, and it is, except that um, sometimes at this point, they haven't practiced those concepts in a while. And I want them to see that it still applies, even though we're doing two-step equations or, or one-step equation. And that's one, two, three, four, five groups. And they each have three. And of course, I wouldn't do this every day with one and two step equations, just one time to remember what we mean uh, by all these operations and how we could, I'd say, brain our way through what was in the bag, even if we didn't do the moving things side to side. And then my last problem, I have two bags. They are both X, so my coefficient is two. with the X on it and in this case I'm going to add negative 6 and that is going to equal 0. So I would like to throw in a 0 problem. Um, make sure they remember and so what am I going to have to have to fill in two equal X's to fill in those negative spaces and end up with nothing, which means I need to fill all of them. I need to create that many negative pairs, so I need three in each bag, so I can go one, two, three, four, five, six. Um, so we're practicing writing equations. We're looking at the quantities. Um, so 2x minus 6 equals 0. We are remembering how to solve one and two step equations. Um, but we're looking at the actual math behind it, the quantities behind it, rather than just jumping straight in to do the inverse operation, make sure you do the same thing to the other side, um, and, uh, and then in two-step again, divide or multiply. Mainly I want to do this and then uh, on our next class, they will create their own bag with some sort of problem uh, so that I can see that they understand the concept and then um, I'll be able to refer back to this anytime someone's stuck on a, an equation trying to solve for it we can refer back to let's let's think through the logic of how we had to build the pieces of the equation to find what was missing.